Hey folks, welcome to another week here at 3B Outdoors. On this week's show, we're going to Ohio on a whitetail hunt with pro staffer Richie Mason, and you're not going to believe where this buck ends up. Then we're going to Southwest Virginia with pro staffer Clayton McDavid and Dustin Light as they try to double up on two big old longbeards. I'm Freddie Neely, and welcome to 3B Outdoors. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss a second of this hunt. Hunting. Fishing. Hunting. Fishing. For 10 years. A decade. <laughs> Real. This night here might have a little more pull. What a beast of a smallmouth. <laughs> Gotta throw a tight line. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're here in Ohio. Yes, sir. It all happened so fast. Boy, the big dog just put the smoke on a big old hole. See, I told you hunting carried us for 10 years. Anybody can sit in a tree stand, eat crackers long enough, and something will walk by you can shoot. Any two-year-old can use a floaty bobber. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for 10 awesome years. 3B Outdoors is brought to you by Visit Kingsport, Tennessee. Retreat. Play. Relax. Have you guys ever had one of those stands? Every time you go to it, you just know you're gonna kill a big buck. This particular stand Lionel and I were hunting in this this on this hunt is one of those stands. It's just it's in a perfect spot. One end is a really good set of hardwoods, and the other end is mainly a thick at which they bed. So every time you go in there, this is just one of them spots. You just feel like any time it's gonna happen. Any time of the year, it don't matter if it's early season, the rut, it's just one of those spots that it's a honey hole. I brought out my war paint tonight. Hopefully it changed my luck up. Uh, I've seen some deer, but just not the quality of deer I've been wanting. I've got some real good ones on trail camera. I've got a real thick 10 pointer coming in here. That's what we're after tonight. Anything else, we're gonna let walk. Uh, the wind is iffy, it's swirling, but we got our ozonics going and we're jamming the heck out of them. We'll be okay. The scout look was, was project, predicting a perfect wind for that spot for that evening. When we got in there, the wind was just swirling everywhere. I mean, we was constantly reaching up and changing our ozonics. This little hollow right here is a travel corridor in between two big giant hard, groves of hardwoods. Um, pretty much the only wooded area they got to get back and forth, so they almost got to pass through here. So we're just gonna sit back and uh, hope the action heats up here shortly. We had a doe, we seen her come off the hill in that open field, she was headed right to us. Well, about that time we felt the wind shift, hit us right in the back of the neck right at her and she blew us. Well, after she done that, I'd already sp sprayed a little bit of the nose jammer but once she done that, I said, they won't blow us again. I mean, I drenched everything. Well, it was getting to be about, I'd say 5.30, and we had five, four or five does feeding under us. We had a small buck coming off the hill toward us. Well, about that time, I seen movement up to my left, and I said, there he comes, Lionel. And it was a really wide 10-pointer. I called him the wide, the wide 10. Real chocolate rack, real massive. He fed around there in our buck bomb for a while. And I almost let him let him go, but that one time he looked right up at us, and I seen how wide he was. He ended up being 22 inches inside. I, I couldn't let him go. As soon as he gave me that broadside quarter and away shot, I let the old rage, I let it go, and it hit home. It hit him like a ton of bricks. He done the mule kick, and he was gone. My target buck, baby. Was a shot good, Lionel? Give me some, buddy. The big, wide, ten, dark chocolate rack. Love it when a plane comes together. Yes. 
why I'm shooting Matthews, baby. Took forever for him to turn and give me a good shot. I, I didn't think he was going to do it. But, uh, man, the wind has been shifting all over the place tonight. We, uh, we've been turning these Ozonics like crazy. This last time I got the can of nose jammer out, and I bet I sprayed a half a can of it. And we ain't had a deer window since. But, uh, I don't think that deer went far to you. No. I think he crashed right there. Yes, yes, yes. By the time Lionel got her stuff together and uh, got down out of the tree and went over and looked at the impact spot, um, it was getting pretty dark. But I'm a lot more confident about that shot than I was that one that, a couple years ago. I just barely got light. <laughs> We decided to just go on back to Jeff's house, Freddie and, and Fess and Jeff and I and Lionel, we all met up at the, back at Jeff's and uh, we've reviewed the footage on, his, on Jeff's big screen. After we watched the shot on the, on the big screen, we all decided it was, a, it was a lethal hit. So we all loaded up and went back out to the farm and uh, at first we had trouble find, finding the blood and once we... Uh, we tracked him probably 50 yards, and we found the air. He broke the air off. It looked like we'd had probably had about 14, 15 inches of penetration. Right there. There you go. Good. Right there, son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You on him? Yeah, I'm on him. Right there. Yeah, well, he ain't freaking it was getting to be about 10 or 11 o'clock, and we'd almost decided to, uh, to give up for the, morning, for the evening. We was gonna come back the next day. We'd done tracking probably 75 to 80 yards out in that field, and we was having a really rough time uh, finding blood. See it? Yeah. Yeah, it's gushing out right there. Yep. Put that way up here on this. Where we go? Think we're jumping? No, not yet. I knew there was a pond down over from us, and you've always heard that if they're hurt bad, that they'll head to water. Well, we had done shined our lights down in that pond, and, and I think Fess and Pete had already walked down to the to one edge, at one side of the pond, and kind of you know looked at it, looked in it, and didn't see anything. Well, we finally got back on the blood, and we tracked it within 50 yards of that pond, and lo and behold, Fess and Pete went back down to the pond, and this pond was full of green scum. That deer had made it to the pond, and the only thing you could see showing, his rack was holding his head up. You could see one side of his horns and just part of his side. But there's the buck, boys. They go to water every time. Man, he is this far back, ain't he? A little, little further than here. That's the other side now, Richie. Yeah, yeah. Look there where he's there look at he his is. head print. Yeah, look at his head print right there where he went print. down in it. <laughs> Right there is proof they go to water. You're going to have to wait out in there and get him. Get him out of there, Richie. Richie. Get him out of there, first off. I waited out there and got him, and he was just full of that green pond, uh, pond scum. We actually call him the mossy horns. Um, he's at the taxidermist right now, which Pete Woodruff does my taxidermy. We're going to go to the craft store and buy some of this moss and put on his horns like he was when we found him. His head is right in there somewhere. That's a tail. Oh, it is. Oh, I see horns. They're coming up, boys. Look at horns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look, y'all ain't going to help me. Look at it. I can't get a hold of them. That's what you call moss horns right there. That's boy. mossy horns. Boy, he's heavy, ain't he? <laughs> he does a little water in him. Mossy horns. That's a good butt. Yes, it is. Yeah, boy. Good boy. That's yeah, all boy. Yeah, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, boy. Right there, boy. Yeah. You know the saying, if they're hit, go to water? We looked over this deer twice, two or three times. But, uh, what'd he go, 150 yards? Yep. We just we just about ready to decide to head back out and come back tomorrow. Now we're fresh and 
And Lionel said, boys, what's that laying there? I'm glad to have him, boys. He's a good one. Uh, he's the, 12 pointer, ain't he? Yeah, he's 12. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Last night, we, uh, we actually found him in a pond. He was covered in pond scum, green as a gourd all over. The only thing sticking up was this side of him. Had the pond been deep enough, he would have sunk and we'd have never found him. <laughs> I think the algae would have covered the hole up and he'd have been gone because the blood trail just about ran out. We, was, we had already looked at that pond two or three times and we looked right over top of him. That's how much of him was sunk. First of all, I want to thank God for making all this possible. Without him, none of us would be doing this. I want to thank you guys for watching us. We want to thank our sponsors. And you don't want to forget to take your nose jammer with you. This portion of 3B Outdoors is brought to you by these fine companies. Here in Northeast Tennessee, the mountains have a story to tell. An exciting account of outdoor adventure full of fishermen's tales from our finest rivers and lakes. A genuine page turner, brimming with places to retreat, play, relax, sure to leave you wanting more. Come and write your own chapter in this mountain tale. Whether it's shooting for fun, Shooting for victory. Or the one chance at the trophy of a lifetime. Trust Spot Hog, the world's toughest archery products. Outdoor Expo in Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. Presented by 3B Outdoors, January 6th through the 8th at Meadowview Conference Resort and Convention Center in Kingsport. This is a nice one. Mercury engine tap. Speed and acceleration you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Check us out on the internet at 3boutdoors.com, plus YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey guys, we're in uh, Southwest Virginia. Me and my good buddy, Dustin Light, we got set up in our, our double bull blind this morning. Oh, I can hardly sleep last night like a kid in a candy store. Some things never change. <laughs> Hey, we're tired of sitting in this blind. Three gobblers we saw this morning, we was planning on them uh, coming down to our decoys, but they just waltzed off like they didn't have a clue is even in the world. Anyway, we're gonna circle around and get on the back side of them over here and see if we can, uh, we might be able to call them in over there. It's just sometimes you move on them and they get fired up about it, I don't know, but we're gonna try that. Let's walk around here and see what happens. This blind, we can't, Dustin and I, we can't deal with that. We're more of a running gun people. Let's go. Let's see if we can get them to fire up. I'm on 
This is a war pension, wouldn't you? <laughs> Let me go get that one. There's another one gobbling out here. And we'll get our dream. That's a good bird, Dustin. We'll have to take him all day long, won't we? Man. Hey, before we do before we do an interview, let's go up here and see if we can't get you one on the ground. This portion of 3B Outdoors is brought to you by these fine companies. In Northeast Tennessee, you live the mountains, live the music, live the sizzle of local flavor, live the heart of its people, live the adventure at every turn while you retreat, play, relax. Visit Kingsport. You live Kingsport. Lightweight power you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. There they are. There they are. Oh, God, something spooked them. Was that a bird ground? No, it was my stomach. I'm hungry. Well, this turkey hunting is way overrated. Let's go down Kearney's and get us some of that roasted chicken they talk about. You know what Mike says, seven days without chicken makes one week. Let's go. Hey, let's go. I'm all for it. You want a good home-cooked meal? Come to Lynn Garden Restaurant in Kingsport. You won't be disappointed. And here's your proof. Hey, 3B fans, check out our new website at 3boutdoors.com where you can stay in touch with social media feeds, learn more about the crew, view all past episodes and bonus footage, plus the much-anticipated online store where you can purchase quality 3B Outdoors gear. Double D. Oh, man. <laughs> I lost my call. Oh, man. I was going to come down here too. I'm okay with that. This guy, we got two a laying at the same place. <laughs> two a laying at the same place. Boys, you can't be. Man. <laughs> It had been, what, maybe 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes since Clayton killed his. 
and that one was still gobbling. And, well, he just sat back down, switch, switch places, and couldn't even switch mics off yet. And he was on top of us, gobbling hard. And then we can hear him spitting and drumming. Then Clinton's, I see his fan. About that time, I saw it too, and he just came out, and <laughs> we just let him sit there and play with that decoy. I was hoping he'd mount my hen, but he never did mount it. And then Clayton went and took his and flopped it out there. And I thought he might come out there and see his out there too, and maybe jump on it and put on a show. But we milked the footage as long as I could. I got, I about got, got too long then. So. But he flopped right down there just within yards of Clayton's, so I'll run up here and get both of them. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> you can't beat it. That's a load of turkey. He just got one spur, him. I bet he's bigger, though. No. No? Uh uh. No. Just a little spur. No doubt. A little small spur. No, he's got two. I had to cover up my hand. But he's, look like Jake's spur. But he's got full beard. Yeah, you got full beard. Yes, sir. <laughs> you can't beat it. No. Man, it's good turkey. Look at them spurs. Boy, he ain't. Uh... He's got to have spurs, look. Mm -hmm. He's your best. You can't beat it, boss. No. We just had another another awesome day turkey hunting. We uh, we came out this morning. It was cold. I think we got here and it was about 33 degrees, according to my phone. We weren't really sure if they'd say much, and, and they didn't. We heard some birds early gobbling at some, gobbling at some, uh, some crows and stuff. They never really got fired up. So we sat there in the blind. He'd, he had roosted some birds last night and knew where a big group was roosting. So we saw some hens early and they, they kind of disappeared and saw four and couldn't believe it wasn't Tom with them. Trying run to cut them off, exactly. Come out of that blind and run and gun. Yeah, we, we, we started out in blind just trying to get good footage and everything. And it, it dri about drives both of us crazy. We like to run and gun. So we got around here and got set up on those birds. And you know, Clayton told me he, he saw a big gobbler strutting out the road. And, Turned out to be three of them, and I had to turn and move the camera and couldn't see them for the longest time. And finally, I had to lean over and, and where I get on the right side of the viewfinder and see it and got on the bird, and they walked out right in front of him, and, and uh, <laughs> Henry smoked them. And, the uh, feathers just bowed. <laughs> Might have got a little low on Yeah, that one. a little low, but then, <clears> then, it worked. then this bird here got fired up. Oh, I just called, just soft called to him, and bow. And he, was, stand. he was on top of us before oh, we knew it. Yeah. And so we, we switch pla switched places. I didn't have a chance to get the, the mic swapped over and I ended up having to throw Clayton his glasses over to him. And man, he came in and I was just, I was just let him do his thing. And I was hoping he's going to mount my hen there, but he never, never would. I waited as long as I could and Clayton was getting antsy too. And so finally we just, we just let it eat. And the, uh, the heavy shot Magnum blend absolutely did a number on these two birds again. I've killed two birds now once on opening weekend and this one today and Clayton killed that one today. This is his first bird of the season. Yep. Virginia season just opened up this past Saturday. So we brought my gun this morning, got the, the heavy shot choke shooting the Magnum blend. That gun's three for three so far this season. So uh, I think I've I think I've got me a winner. So we've, we've doubled up again, had just an incredible, incredible hunt and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. I know we did. Oh, we? yeah. Yeah, thanks again, man. We'll we do it again. Do it again. <laughs> well, we've had a great day. And before we get these uh, turkeys hauled up out of here, just going to make me a little, little squincher drink here. Got our little to-go packs. Just got a bottle of water. So all you got to do is pour it in, shake it up, and you've got your squincher drink right there. And it's just as easy as that. These packs don't weigh anything. You just put them in your pocket and... And whenever you shake them up real good, you, you're good to go. So after a nice day of turkey hunting, running, gunning, trying to keep up with Clayton, it really hits the spot. All right. Hope you got two of them. <laughs> I just got one. <laughs> This portion of 3B Outdoors is brought to you by these fine companies. Luminoc, the original self-contained lighted knock on the market, patented to accept replaceable lithium batteries and designed to work with all carbon aero shafts while producing the brightest results during any condition. Easily the most durable illuminated knocks to allow up to 40 hours of continuous use and are packaged and crafted to perfection for hundreds of shots. 
there's only one true Luminoc. Luminoc by Burt Coyote, made in the USA. Hey 3B fans, check out our new website at 3boutdoors.com where you can stay in touch with social media feeds, learn more about the crew, view all past episodes and bonus footage, plus the much anticipated online store where you can purchase quality 3B Outdoors gear. You don't want to miss the biggest outdoor expo in Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. Presented by 3B Outdoors, January 6th through the 8th at Meadowview Conference Resort and Convention Center in Kingsport. have a story to tell. An exciting account of outdoor adventure, full of fishermen's tales from our finest rivers and lakes. A genuine page turner, brimming with places to retreat, play, relax, sure to leave you wanting more. Come and write your own chapter in this mountain tale. Wow, what a show. You know, if all of us hadn't been up there that evening, we might have never found that deer. That just goes to show you, sometimes when a deer's hit hard, it will go to water. And what about Clayton and Dustin doubling up on those two big old long beards? It doesn't get much better than that. Well, we're about out of time again this week, folks. Join us again next week where we'll be somewhere on the water or in the woods. I'm Freddie Nelly, and thanks so much for watching 3V Outdoors TV. Take one. <laughs>